Good morning, everyone. I am Min Hang Jo from Korea University. I'm very pleased to give a talk today. Before I begin my talk, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference for kindly inviting me to this meeting. Today, I'm going to talk about this time resolved spectroscopy with multiple synchronized Modlock lasers. This is the table of contents after a brief introduction to the concept of coherence interference i'm going to talk about optical frequency comb technology and then i will show you how to use two broadband frequency comb lasers can be used to carry out linear and nonlinear spectroscopy of molecules in condensed phases the most important part of my talk is about our recent experimental demonstration of two-dimensional electronic spectroscopy with two synchronized Modlock lasers. So let me start with a brief introduction to coherence and interference phenomena. When two or more coherent waves are added together in space and time, they interfere constructively or destructively depending on the relative phases of the two waves. A number of interesting processes in nature are something to do with wave interferences. On a microscopic scale, a chemical bond is an excellent example that shows the importance of uh, interference between two or more electronic wave functions. On a cosmic scale, the gravitational wave is a well-known and intensively studied example. In order to detect such a weak gravitational wave, it was necessary to use a gigantic interferometer that looks like this, with many kilometers long arms here and there. Today I'm going to show you how one can use two coherent lasers to replace these two beams in an interferometry for specifically spectroscopic measurements of molecules in condensed phases. Suppose we are interested in addressing a question like what is the best way to measure the wave character of quantum or even classical objects? We will naturally come up with the famous double slit experiment, which was initially demonstrated by Thomas Young a very long time ago. This is the typical experimental scheme of Young's double slit measurement. There are two slits here and there through which light passes. Here it is immensely important to realize that the incoming wave generated by a single aperture must be coherent. Only then the two waves emitted from the two apertures can create an interference pattern on the screen. This is because there is a fixed phase relation between the two waves from the two apertures A and B. This double slit experiment is relatively easy to understand. But then, how is the double slit experiment related to modern molecular spectroscopy and microscopy? This is the central question I had in my mind over the years. Here is the double slit experimental scheme again. The two coherent lights can produce an interference pattern on the screen with a notably strong fringe visibility. Look at this superposition state of waves 1 and 2. Then the probability distribution is given by the sum of three terms. The last term, which is two times the real part of the wave product, is responsible for the fringe pattern. Now let's assume that molecules placed in front of the upper slit are allowed to interact with the wave one. Then the first wave is going to be both attenuated in intensity and shifted in phase, which are related to the imaginary real parts of the complex linear susceptibility of the molecules. So comparing the two interference patterns, one with molecules, the other without molecule, then we can extract critical information about the attenuation factor kappa and the phase shift phi. They are related to the linear absorption 
and refraction spectra of the molecules under investigation. Recently, dual frequency comb spectroscopy and imaging techniques has attracted a great deal of attention. For those who may not be familiar with optical frequency comb lasers, I would like to spend a few minutes to discuss the similarity and difference of optical frequency combs compared to the conventional amplified modlock lasers. The optical frequency comb technique was initially developed for precision measurements and metrological applications. To understand this technique, it would be useful to consider these Fourier transform relations. First, if the time-dependent function is just a, a simple sine wave, its Fourier transform spectrum is a direct delta function in the frequency domain. If the oscillating function has a Gaussian temporal envelope like this, its spectrum becomes a Gaussian function with spectral bandwidth inversely proportional to the duration time of the pulse. Now, if an infinite number of pulses with well-defined phases among the pulse to fields is free transformed, then the generated spectrum consists of lines that are equally spaced and the frequency spacing between any two lines is nothing but the repetition frequency itself. So more specifically and quantitatively, the frequency of each comb line is determined by just the two frequency parameters, repetition frequency, FR, and carrier envelope offset frequency, FCO. And here N is nothing but an integer. So mathematically, the optical frequency comb electric field in either the time domain or frequency domain can be written as the sum of monochromatic components like that. To understand the principle of dual frequency comb linear spectroscopy, it is necessary to have a good understanding of asynchronous optical sampling technique, ASOPS in short. Before I explain the basics of ASOPS technique, let me point out the similarity between the conventional FDIR spectroscopy and dual frequency comb spectroscopy. In the conventional FDR spectrometer, there is a moving mirror and fixed mirror. The speed of moving mirror divided by the speed of light is the down conversion factor. Due to this small factor, one can measure the ultrafast process like free induction decay of vibrational mode with time domain interferometric field generated by a pair of mirrors. On the other hand, the two frequency combs having slightly different repetition frequencies can generate two trains of pulses having slightly mismatched time intervals at every repetition time. Therefore, the time domain interferograms at every repetition time can be recorded with hundreds of megahertz sampling rate. The free transform of this time domain interferogram provides a spectrum in the microwave frequency domain, which can be converted into optical frequency domain spectrum. Let us consider two frequency points with equally slightly detuned repetition rates as much as delta FR. The time interval generated by this automatic time delay scanning technique is delta T that is given by this formula. If the repetition frequency is 100 megahertz and the detuning frequency delta FR is set to be 1 hertz, then the time interval delta T becomes as short as 180 seconds. Here the down conversion factor defined like this is 10 to the minus 8. Therefore, the interference recorded in tens of nanosecond time scale in the laboratory frame actually can provide information on the sub femtosecond relaxation processes of molecules in either the gas or condensed phases. The first experiment we carried out is the linear spectroscopy with 
two optical frequency cones. We have two lasers here and there with repetition frequency of 80 MHz and 80 MHz plus 5 Hz. The automatically generated time interval in this particular case, delta T, is 6.25 femtosecond. That partly determines the time resolution of this interferometric FT spectrometer. We used a slow scalar detector with 500 picosecond rising time. Despite this slow response time of our detector, we could measure the electronic free induction decay taking place on tens of femtosecond time scale. In this particular example, we used IR140 dye molecule in solution. So we experimentally measured time domain interferograms look like this. There appear a series of spikes over three seconds. Each spike shows a clear interference pattern looks like this, of which time span is 2.4 microsecond. Using the interferograms of IR140 dissolved in ethanol and the blank ethanol itself, we could freer transform these two time domain interferograms to obtain power spectra and linear absorption and transmission spectra simultaneously. But that was just a steady state linear spectroscopy measurement. We wanted to use two modular lasers, femtosecond lasers, generating two trains of pulses to study ultra-fast molecular processes like these, whose timescales are in the range from femtoseconds, picosecond, nanoseconds, up to microseconds, depending on molecular systems and processes. Using the asynchronous optical sampling scheme, we were able to measure the pump probe signal of IR125 dye molecules in solutions, whose excited state lifetime is about a few hundreds of picoseconds. So this is the schematic diagram of our experimental setup. Two repetition frequency stabilized modular lasers are here and there. In the pump probe measurement, we do not need to precisely stabilize the optical phases of these two output fields because the pump probe itself is to measure incoherent population relaxation of the excited state molecules. Therefore, there is no need to encode the optical phase into the quantum molecular state evolution. Furthermore, here we do not need any mechanical delay line to scan the pump and probe delay time. For this experiment, one problem was the photo damage caused by unused pump pulses. We therefore used an optical triggering scheme based on the second harmonic generation process. One of the interesting features of this ASAPS based pump probe technique is that one can easily control the minimal interval time between the pump and probe pulses from the two lasers by simply changing the repetition frequency and the detuning frequencies. If the detuning frequency delta FR is set to be 1 kilohertz, then the time interval in this particular case becomes 156 femtosecond, whereas it becomes 1.595 femtosecond if the detuning repetition frequency is adjusted to be 12.5 hertz. Therefore, it is relatively easy and straightforward to select either fast or slow scan mode. Using the slow scan mode with the small detuning repetition frequency, you can collect more data points, which correspond to the red curve in this figure. So after removing the slowly varying component from the low data, and for your transforming the, the residual data, we could obtain the vibrational spectrum of vibronically coupled modes of this dye molecule. 
The next step is to make our experimental setup useful for measuring the frequency result pump probe spectra. To measure both the phase and amplitude of pump probe signal field, we had to carry out heterodyne detection with local oscillator pulses from modlock lasers. Local oscillator right there. The measured interferogram looks like this in the time domain. That exhibits the interference between the pump and local oscillator fields. However, the more interesting features can be revealed by zooming in the data. Look at these saw teeth like signals whose decay pattern corresponds to the population relaxation of the excited state molecule. The sampling rate, which is 1 over delta F1, is in this particular case 0.78 millisecond. Because of this fast sampling rate, even though the translational stage up there moves continuously, its position can be considered to be fixed during each pump probe ASAPS scanning. We shall call this technique as twofold time multiplexing method. From the measured time domain interferogram, we were able to obtain the transient absorption, transient refraction spectra with femtosecond time resolution for a few nanoseconds simultaneously. Again, I'd like to emphasize that this nanosecond transient PP spectra, pump probe spectra, with femtosecond time resolution was obtained without using any a few meter long translational stage at all. In fact, one of the most important and ultimate goals of this project is to develop two-dimensional electronic spectroscopy technique with synchronized dual mode locked lasers. Recently, we could demonstrate its experimental feasibility. This is the schematic representation of our setup. Two optical frequency comb lasers are shown here. As you know, the two-dimensional electronic spectroscopy requires four ultra-short pulses, pump one, pump two, probe, and local oscillator pulses. First of all, the most important waiting time scanning was achieved by adopting the ASAPS asynchronous optical sampling technique. The first electronic coherence time scanning over TAR1 was achieved with the translation of stage 1 in a step scan mode. The phase sensitive detection of the third order signal field with a local oscillator pulse is achieved with another translation of stage 2 in a continuous scan mode. This latter is the twofold time multiplexing technique. The entire signal looks like this. The x axis is tau 1, that is the time delay between the two pump pulses, whereas the y axis is the time delay between the probe and local oscillator pulses. The z axis is the amplitude of the measured interferogram signal. The density of experimental data is extraordinarily high. For example, the slice interferogram at 0 tau 1 is shown here. The zoomed in structure of each slice interferogram contains the transient two dimensional electronic spectroscopy signals shown here with respect to the waiting time DW. Each transient signal looked like these. To obtain the two-dimensional electronic spectra, we need to rearrange the three-dimensional data and then perform two-dimensional Fourier transformations to obtain these representative two-dimensional electronic spectra. Both femtosecond two-dimensional electronic spectra and nanosecond two-dimensional electronic spectra can be measured without any meter-long translational stage for waiting time scanning. So using the slow scan mode with small detuning repetition frequency, 
we could obtain femtosecond reserve the signals. And then the coherent vibrational spectra could obtain. More recently, we were able to carry out two-dimensional electronic spectroscopy studies of bacterial chlorophyll and light harvesting complex two proteins with this setup and found very interesting low-frequency vibronically coupled modes that are strongly affected by the electronic couplings. Especially, we found interesting non condon effects and their relations with symmetry-breaking vibrational motions. Unfortunately, I don't have time today. Perhaps I'll be able to talk about these exciting results in the next ultra-fast phenomena meeting. In short, our two-dimensional electronic spectroscopic technique with uh, synchronized dual mode locked lasers has clear advantages summarized here. Of course, it does have disadvantage too. The most notable disadvantage of this technique is that the duty cycle is too low. That means a number of laser pulses are not used, unfortunately. So we are currently developing a new technique based on acousto-optic uh, method to overcome uh, this problem in the near future. So here is the summary. I have tried to uh, show the various nonlinear optical spectroscopic techniques are possible using more than one mode lock lasers, reference to the standard frequency generated by the same radio frequency synthesizer. Currently, we are trying to develop higher order spectroscopic technique with two or even three synchronized mode lock lasers to investigate ultra fast chemical or biological processes in condensed phases. So finally, I'd like to thank my postdocs, Juno Kim, Do Soo Han, Sun Gyeong Lee, and a collaborator, Professor Taehyun Yoon, in physics department for their hard works and stimulating discussions. That is all I have to say today. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll be happy to answer your questions.